Hello there. Well, welcome to a really important conceptual uh, kind of session. So let's get to it. Um, so originally what you want to do is say we have a medium. Uh, so, so there's a medium on this side. So semi-infinite. Okay, and there's a medium on this side. Let's call it medium one this side, a medium two this side. This is semi infinite. And uh, they're both non conducting and uh, linear medium. Uh, by linear medium, what do we mean by linear medium? Linear medium means uh, this linear medium means that I can write magnet, magnetic field equals to mu times h and I can write uh, d equals to epsilon d. So there is epsilon and there is a mu and they're kind of linear to this. Remember h and d. Uh, this you can think this is def defining edge and this term be and you can you you know these relationships del dot d is row free del dot b equal to zero and del cross e equals to minus db dt and del cross b e h equals to free current plus dd dt so um so these are the maxwell's equations and we can assume that there are no charges or anything like that over there so this this will be equal to zero and this will be zero so these will be the equations and when these equations are kind of combined using these properties then, then you can show that del is square, uh, del is square b uh, um, of delta e minus mu epsilon d square e dt square equal to zero, and del is square b minus mu epsilon naught d square b dt square equal to zero. So these are wave equations, and when you solve them, you get a solution like this. We call it plane waves. We can just look at plane waves. So this is a special type of solutions. Uh, you can write these solutions, uh, these plane waves. Uh, let me just uh, make sure you're up on the uh, concept of plane waves. So this, uh, suppose I'm along the z-axis. So then k dot, so k vector, is some k times z hat then this is kz so we're looking at uh, k times z so it's going towards positive x uh, part z axis uh, and if this was say if i took a, a any plane so the, these are planes which are at different values of z so if i look at this plane This plane, all the at all points, uh, this electric field has same value. E or B, uh, so there's a same throughout this. It is it, different at a different place. So, say at time t equal to zero, t equal to zero. You look at all of this. This is some other value. Then maybe this is E1 and this is E2, but same on the all points of a plane. And this was a plane wave. So it's as if uh, we also think of that as a the front of the wave. So if this was like a maximum value, then with time, this will travel with the speed of the wave. And so it will travel with the speed of the wave. And the speed of the wave 
in this equation we can say is 1 over the square root of mu epsilon okay you can write these in complex notation for instance for the electric field you can use some other symbol uh, and uh, it will help us do a calculation and this this calls the real part of this to get the original one using this I just use the real part and then exactly same as that we're using cosine in earlier lectures I use sine but you know sine and cosine can be changed to each other cosine is more common and it goes well with the real part okay let's back to our reflection problem so to set it up this side is mu one epsilon one so that's that's the only thing that defines the medium and this side is mu two epsilon two you're also familiar with uh, um, refractive index right for medium so say this is v1 is 1 over square root of mu 1 epsilon 1 and speed of the wave will be 1 of mu 2 epsilon 2 so refractive index on this side is speed of light over v1 and refractive index on this side is speed of light over v2 so this is this is the speed of uh, wave in this medium or light in this medium if this is light wave so refractive index is speed of light in a vacuum divided by speed of light in the medium okay so and we're going to take this as a plane interface so we um looking at this um we let's let's have this as a plane interface 3d will look like this so when we would like to solve that we uh, wave comes in in this direction so there's some incident wave it has some intensity let's call it intensity of the incident wave and then this wave will uh, come out this way some some direction uh, this will be intensity of this will be transmitted wave t for transmitted and then some wave will be reflected this is this is going to get i reflected so let's go to i incident i transmit less small letter so we want to be able to get this more general case uh, we will show maybe I, I will not this video but in the future we we're going to show this case but let's do a uh, what happens when it comes like on perpendicular to it so say the wave instead of uh, you can write it like this comes in like this right so we we take a cross section we write it this way so if suppose this this was a z axis so and this could be this could be x axis so we look in x z plane and so waves are, are in the x z plane and this is theta incidence and this is theta reflected and this is theta transmitted see these are uh, sometimes use the refracted but I'm going to use for reflected here uh, another way to write this is I'm going to be in medium 1 and medium 2 so I can write in medium 1 it come in and this is medium 1 and let's call it prime that way you know these two are both in medium 1 and this to write medium 2 I kind of prefer using 1 and 2 it just goes with the rest of the thing you already know the answer uh, we expect in terms of light so the answer we expect in terms of direction is um, from elementary geometric optics right you get a theta 1 prime equals to theta 1 that's the law of reflection okay and theta 2 and theta 1 these these two angles uh, with respect to the normal this is called normal is uh, 
it's normal and this is normal in the other medium this is normal in the first medium and this, this is the normal direction in the other medium uh, theta 1 is n1 sin theta 1 equals n2 sin theta 2 and this probably law, law of refraction also goes by Snell's law that you probably already know we can actually uh, if I ask when you know this this only tells us the directions of things right so if you were to ask hey how much of the light so if if I have a if I have a intensity here is this much an intensity here is uh, this much and an intensity here is this i1 i1 prime what are the intensity relations and how do they depend on the say uh, other parameters like uh, these kinds of things do they depend on those things yeah, they should right so what are the relations to intensity uh, for instance i may want to know i1 prime over i1 I want to know I2 over I1. You know, these are important things that I want to know uh, to, uh, to not only know the direction in which the, they will travel, but also how much will go in which direction. Okay, how much it will get transmitted, how much it will get reflected if I shine light on it. That actually you have to do electricity and magnetism you have to go uh, go to the electricity and magnetism and try to answer that question okay so instead of answering this more complicated situation let me draw another picture and show you what i'm gonna address okay uh, let's clean up a little bit and draw another picture out here Okay, so what I want to do is uh, what is called uh, normal. So I'm going to send it in this direction, which is this is normal O, oh, this is normal N2, right? So this angle theta 1 will be 0 degrees. And so reflection will also, but based on this, you can also guess that this will be the inc incident and this will be the reflected and the transmitted will also be in that way so this will be uh, easy to write the waves we want to write for will be very easy for us to write and then uh, what happens at this interface will be easy to write so this this i want to work out uh, so this incident one intensity of one prime and incidence of two so th this is called a uh, thing that is the incidence is normal case of normal incidence so we're, we're not doing this to do this we have to do the arbitrary situation okay and we're going to do it another time but so we're going to do just this and so here our goal is goal is to in this particular limited but very important case what is i1 prime or i1 formula and what is i2 over i1 formula okay so let's do that drive that out so our tool will be very simple as you know it's very uh, um, Sometimes this kind of thing is written in more advanced books than introductory, but it's really accessible to us in introductory level. So we'll have a, on, on this side, this is medium one, we'll have two waves. And on this side, we'll have one wave on this side. So, so on this side, we're going to have I1. So in medium one, so I1 is traveling to the right, so it's going to be K, so K1 
is with this uh, some web number z hat so we plug in there i get cosine kz minus omega t plus v and i can just write like this so i want i want to write i1 but um, i1 will be epsilon uh, epsilon this plus but entire electric field on the side of one. So this is going to be half epsilon one V one uh, E zero one e square. Uh, but what is this? Uh, is it actually um, okay? We can write like that, and so we. We, we are going to uh, try to uh, see the relationship between them, right? So I2. So similarly, you can write I2 for this the amplitude part, amplitude part. And you can write half epsilon 2, epsilon 1. This is still on the I1 prime. It's still on this side, V1 e zero one prime e square and i two prime equals to half e two v two e zero two e square. The trouble with this is uh, we don't know what these guys are by themselves. They all so how do we know e zero one prime? from E01. We only know the incidence guy. We only know this. So when we say this over that, I say I1 prime over I1. I cancel these guys. I get E01 prime over E01 e square. But that's that stops here. Uh, so I don't get any further than that. And same thing for I2 over I1, I get epsilon 2 V2 over epsilon 1 V1, E0 2 over E0 1. So we don't know, unless we know this and this in terms of E0 1, I'm stuck here, right? So it seems like I need to really work with the waves, details of the waves. And that's actually true. So let's write out the waves. Uh, and see, so E1 as a vector, um, let's see it's in the x direction, uh, E1 is, is coming like this and perpendicular to that, and it could be x or y, so this is y and this is the x, so I just say x direction, so I'm just, for this concreteness, I'm going to write E01 in the x direction, and I'm just going to write down e zero power e to the power i k z minus omega t plus v. <coughs> so v of one. The k is a wave number, and this angular frequency they remain the same in everything, and for E1 prime uh, will be uh, K1 prime. K1 was this, is going in the other direction. So K1 prime, K K1 prime vector will be K minus K z hat. So when you take a dot product over there, I get a minus over there. So X x hat is still along the x hat e zero one prime it could be if this is minus this is negative this can be positive or negative with respect to that so it will flip will if the uh, wave the, um, flips over then it will be negative this thing negative compared to that so i minus kz minus omega t plus phi one prime and e2 
will still be in the x direction because it's going in that direction x hat uh, e 0 2 e to the power i and it will be kz minus omega t plus phi 2 the associated magnetic fields for this guy will be in the y direction so b1 in the will be y direction e01 over v1 right so that's the relationship between the amplitudes we have talked about in previous video kz minus omega t plus phi and b1 prime will be now if it's if a wave is going this way the k is this way and electric field is that way k prime is that way then i use right hand rule e to b so the b will be that way right and if you look x y z it still remain along the z axis okay right if it's going if it was this way uh so it, so it's, it's going to be uh, so if, if this is positive then uh, this will remain positive if, now suppose this becomes negative if this a e prime becomes this way then uh, then b b prime will be that way because uh, actually opposite opposite to what I'm thinking in my case the b will be this way b prime is that way because I, I go right hand from e to b and thumb points in the direction of k so so if this way then the b so it's going to be minus minus uh, minus y hat e01 prime over v1 because still in the v1 medium e to the i minus kz because it's going towards minus direction minus omega t plus phi 1 prime this phase of these two remains the same and phase of these two remains the same and b2 will be y hat v0 2 over v2 e to i kz minus omega t plus phi 2 okay now there, there is a relationship between um, uh, what the net electric field if i look at the interface here so between two medium uh, if i look at a point over here and a point over here and I bring those fields and ask what's the relationship as if they were on the interface so they're called boundary conditions and it has been shown in the in a previous video what the boundary condition would have to be there and let me write that down and we apply the boundary conditions so for any two medium if I have a interface one and there are two medium and net electric field is this side is on the one medium and net electric field on this side similarly uh, similarly you have a B and D and H on this side and B and D and H on that side these are all net okay so I will not write the net but just like E1 and E2 so E parallel to the interface on the one side is equal to E parallel to the interface. This is a vector. So if this is the x direction and this is the y direction and this is the z direction, then this will mean this will mean the E x on the one direction is E x on the two direction. This is a net. So here uh, it will be like this 
and another will be EY on the one direction is EY on the two direction. So this is actually zero equal to zero because for the electric field, there's no Y component. So th this gives me adding these two must equal to that. So it says E01 uh, e to the power i kz minus omega t plus phi 1 plus e0 1 prime e to the power i and this whole thing uh, i minus kz minus omega t plus phi prime phi 1 prime this is on the left side this is equal to e0 to e to i kz minus omega t plus phi 2 and these things are supposed to be at the interface and we're going to take the interface to be origin just like over here so this this is at z equal to 0 and this is equal to z equal to 0 notice using this complex notation e to the power i omega t, e to the power i omega t minus one omega t cancels out, same in every term. And that's one of the advantages of using complex notation calculation in this case. So we can, can just cancel this out, right? This, this guys go away. Oh, this, uh, this is parenthesis. Um, okay, when z equal to zero, these guys go away. So what do we have? We have E01 e to the powers i phi 1 plus E01 prime it's i phi 1 prime equals to E02 uh, e to the power um, e to the power e to the power i phi 2 so this is my equation one um, another thing that happens is um, in the boundary condition so this this we took care of another boundary condition is uh, b1 perpendicular not vector b2 perpendicular there is no perpendicular component. This is just zero equal to zero here. Did give anything new? Another one is a, a d perpendicular one. Uh, I'm two minus d perpendicular one is if there is surface charge here, uh, sigma, and that's equal to zero. So this is zero. So this equal to, it doesn't give this. This actually equals zero. Uh, this ends up same as uh, not same as that but th this this is actually perpendicular component there is no electric field so the, if you look at ep epsilon 1 electric field in 1 equal epsilon 2 a perpendicular that's the z component it in 2 and z component and there's no z component so this is 0 equal to 0 the last one uh, might give us something. The last one is h vector perpendicular one equals to h vector um, and parallel two, and that's correct. So this is uh, one over mu one b parallel x equal to one over mu one b parallel x in two and one and one over mu one b parallel to y one over mu one mu two b parallel now this one is actually zero equal to zero here because there's no x component in the b's so this one is these guys added together and so you already can see there will be a different thing coming up it's going to be e 0 1 um, and this whole thing has to be at z equal to 0 again omega t will cancel out then e to the power i 
phi phi one will come from here over v one, and then you're gonna have a minus e zero one prime e to the power i phi one prime over v two, right? No, v one v one, and on the other side it's gonna be oh, this is this is e zero two e zero two over v2 e to the power i phi 2. So these are two equations we have from which we can actually solve for e0 1 prime and e0 2 prime with the phases, right? And so, so this is like a, this is a, a two equations like a, there's a real part and imaginary part. It's a real part, imaginary part. And so this is also two equations and try to solve it. That I'm gonna solve it and just present uh, on one slide. Okay. And come. Okay, so <clears throat> I rewrote these equations, these equations over here. And I notice that you, you have um, this thing over here as a whole. So no need to carry, uh, you know, all these extra extra symbols. To just combine them and just put a tilde on each symbol for this. We are seriously interested in these amplitudes, right? We're just using complex notation for simplification of calculation. You know? <clears throat> So now this just becomes that, and I can multiply by v2 and v1 on this side, and so it looks like this. And I want to write everything in terms of the, uh, the incident part. So I'm gonna put incident on the other side, incident on the other side, so I get this equation. I need to solve for these guys in terms of this. And I just multiply by whatever I need to cancel out. So to cancel out these guys, just multiply by v1. So v1 times, and add that gives me this and if I should say v2 times this and subtract it gives me that so I get this and it's from there I'm, so this is complex this is complex and we're not looking for information about the amplitudes as a matter for amplitude this has to be equal to amplitude that so and faces from here you can say phi one prime equals to phi one and from here you can say phi two prime equals to phi two or phi phi one. So the phase constant is the same except that if v2 was less than v1, this guy is gonna pick up a minus sign and that's gonna be a phase constant of pi. Okay. So if v2 is less than v1 then this uh, then minus 1 will mean phi 1 prime will be phi plus pi plus or minus pi okay phi 1 pi plus plus this will this has no chance of becoming negative so this phase will all this will always be the case but this is the case only if uh, this remains positive okay <clears throat> That's an important point that it remains positive. Then this is the case. If it becomes negative, then that will be the case. Okay, so but we don't need the phases for intensity. So intensity of uh, yeah, intensity prime over intensity one is just a square of this over this squared. So E01 prime, E01 squared, and that's V2 minus V1 over V2 plus V1 squared. Of course, you can write this into a uh, uh, reflective index of any medium, a speed of light over V in that medium. So V in that medium is C over N, so if you can see, this will become one over n two, one over n one, one over n two, one over n one, 
And so this will go into n1 minus n2 over n1 plus n2 squared. So that's, that will be the one answer. i2 over i1 will be uh, it, because uh, because the formula wise i is half epsilon v is amplitude squared in the medium. So I, I need to have epsilon 2 v2 and e 0 2 is square over epsilon 1 v1 e 0 1 is square and I had this combination. Using this combination, uh, let me uh, pause and clean some place and give you a clean, clean area to write that. Okay, so we can do this uh, uh, slowly here. So let's multiply this by mu2 and mu1 and the whole thing multiplied one by mu2. So this, this guy is one over v2 square. So, and this is one over v1 square. So this together becomes v1 over v2, four v2 square over v1 plus v2 square times mu1 over mu2. Now, th these guys can be turned into c over n1, and this will be c over n2, and this v2, one of the vertical cancels out. And so this, this will be c over n1, and this will be c over n2. So, what we get is four, four times four over n one n two is equal to n one n two n one plus n two square. So when I flip this, this one one product will cancel that, as so we have four uh, and times times mu1 over mu2. It's going to be 4 n1 n2 over n1 plus n2 square times mu1 over mu2. Now think what mu's are. They really don't vary very much, you know, uh, unless you have magnetized solar material. So assuming mu1 is close to mu2, we can kind of get rid of this and this would be our answer. And that, that is how a, a lot of uh, calculations are. But I, I kind of prefer to write, keep it in the velocities. So you have epsilon 2 v2 over epsilon 1 v1. And you can just keep it in 2 v2 over v1 plus v2 square. Either this this is a complete answer. If you just leave it like that, then you're assuming that this this is the case. Okay, I think uh, this is uh, tells you a lot about um, uh, you know when you something you send a wave on to a interface and there's another medium behind there. Some will go through and some will reflect back. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the question is how much, how much of the light will go through and some will come back. And the normal incidence is a very good case to work out. So this, this case is normal incidence. And sometimes uh, you find that these, case, these formulas are so universal, you work out sound wave, it's going to be very similar to these two formulas. But you have to think about what the refractive index is for that wave in that situation. So often people kind of memorize it. So let me just end with just summarizing the final formula. Okay, so here's a um, summary of the final formulas. We're looking at uh, beam has come 90 degrees to the interface. This is the interface. 
uh, and the, the interested relations will be something like this. They will be like this. But you should check out that this this answer actually agrees with uh, what's happening at the energy. So the energy that this guy brought in must equal to energy that got reflected and energy got transmitted per unit time. Of course, the intensity is per unit time, per unit area. So like per unit area of this, this area here uh, is the same. You know? So this area on which this thing came, same area this thing came and same area that went. So, so this should actually play out and I'm gonna leave that as an exercise for you to convince yourself. Okay, take care, bye.